Welcome back everyone, this is Brian. We're gonna continue our journey into Python 3 with the exceptions. So basically, bad things happen and we need to know how to handle them. We've already seen that in these videos and I'm sure you've seen it millions of times working with a computer where it just says like error, or unknown error, or accident denied, or you know, some other crazy thing. But we need to understand a subtle difference here. An error occurs mostly at runtime and it belongs to an unchecked type. This is things like your hardware failing or your network connection dropping or something like that, something completely unexpected. There's really nothing we could do about it. Exceptions, on the other hand, occur at runtime and compile time and occur mainly by code written by developers, meaning we are now creating our own problems. So yes, we can write code to defend against errors, but we can never truly defend 100% against an error. Like how do you defend against your CPU exploding? You just can't, your code will stop working. Exceptions on the other hand would be like division by zero, wrong data types, things like that. So that's what we're gonna really dive into in this video. Also, before we begin, I'm gonna put a simple decorator in here. We covered this in a previous video, but just a quick recap in case this looks like ancient Egyptian algebra. A decorator is a function call that is used by another function call to decorate it. And basically we have a inner function that is going to return a function with any number of arguments or keyword arguments. And we're simply going to print out. And when I say print out, so you're gonna see a bunch of dashes before and a bunch of dashes after we call that function. And just for a little bit of flavor, I put in the function name. And we're gonna use this on every single function. To begin, we're gonna look at the try, accept, and finally. Now, this is gonna be a little challenging to really wrap your head around at first, but what we're really doing here is we're creating some special scopes, and those scopes have special reasons for existing. So first things first, I'm going to create a function called test1. We're going to give it parameters of x and y, and I'm just immediately gonna call pass. We're going to go ahead and use our decorator. Again, if you have no idea what a decorator is, or if this looks horrible, or if you don't understand this, watch the previous video I've done on decorators. But basically, when we call this, it's going to print, call the function, and then print again. That's really all we're doing, even though it looks kind of confusing. All right, so to dive in here, we are going to use try and you notice we get some options in our IDE. Your IDE may look vastly different and these look confusing. Try except, try except else, yeah, finally, so on and so forth. We're gonna go over all of these, but the first thing I'm just gonna do is just try and got to end it in a colon. I'm gonna go ahead and pass for the moment, drop down and we are going to accept. We're gonna pass again, just gonna flesh this out. And then finally, I wanna talk about each one of these in turn. If you're coming from another language, this is basically a try catch finally. So try means we're going to try some code. It may work, it may not. So for example, we could say z equals x divided by y. And then we're just going to print out, whoops, we're going to print out, see what I mean? I'm creating my own errors here. The result. This code looks just, well, boring. It's just basic division, but what could we do here? Horribly, horribly wrong. We could do like a division by zero. And because Python isn't really strongly typed, we could send non-numerical values to this and crash this whole thing. We've seen this before. I've done this in this series before. So we're gonna have to defend against that. So we want to do accept, which is the basic version of like another language's version of catch. And I'm gonna actually put that right here as a comment, catch. So if you're coming from another language, this is catch. It's easier to explain in other languages because it's like catching the ball. You're catching the exemption or somebody's dropping the baby and you're catching it before it hits the floor. And the program of course is your baby in this analogy. So we're going to keep our program or catch our program before it fails and we're going to now execute some type of logic. Something bad happened. Now the problem with this is we don't really know for sure what happened. We just know that something bad happened. 
And we're going to look at later on in this video how to determine what happened and then take specific actions actions based on that. All right, but right now we're at really, really newbie land here. We just want to know something bad happened. Now, finally, finally is going to be called no matter what. So try is an attempt. Except is a catch it if it falls, you know, something bad happened. We got to catch it before it meets a horrible, untimely death. And moving along is what I call finally. It doesn't matter what happens up here. Finally is going to be called. Let's take a look. So I'm going to just print out. Complete. And in case you're wondering with my horrible typing. Yes, most of the programming bugs are misspellings, mistypings, things like that, or just bad data types, things of that nature. So let's see this in action. We're going to say test one, and let's do five and zero. What is immediately standing out? That zero, very ugly. Let's check it out. Uh-oh, function test one, something bad happened. So immediately, instead of having a division by zero error in our program crashing, we were able to catch it and do something. Now let's give it another untimely death here. I'm going to say test one, and let's say five, and cat. Uh, how do you divide five by cats? I'd be really interested in knowing that, but let's try it again. And sure enough, test one, something bad happened, five and cat. So we know that it's not doable. Let's just take this. And let's divide, ah, copy and paste has failed me. There we go. Let's divide five by two and see what we get here. So the result is 2.5. So we know our function now works and we can defend against, well, exceptions. The biggest takeaway from this segment of the video is that you have a try, which is an attempt, exempt, which is a catch, and a finally, which is going to be called no matter what happens. You can see in each one of these examples, whether something bad happened or successfully ran, finally was called. That's your cleanup code. So we're going to change this to clean up. So think about this in terms of like IO. You're going to write to a file. You're going to attempt to open the file and write to it. Something bad happens. And then you would close the file regardless. There are tons of built-in exceptions, and we're looking at the official Python documentation. And I'm just going to scroll down. We're not going to go through all these because we'll be here all day. But there's the generic high-level one, and then it gets into very specifics like arithmetic, buffer, assertions. Now, we're going to talk about assertions right now, but I want you to understand what's going on. Assertion is not a true error. It's something that we're actually creating. So we're going to assert that a condition is true. And if it's true, nothing happens. If it's false though, an error is raised. See, raised when an assert statement fails. We're gonna do that right now. Also understand that you can have tons and tons and tons of these and you can even define your own. So, wow, lots of information to take in, but I'm gonna leave a link to that out there. And we're going to just take code from the last one and just copy it. And we're going to do a bit of surgery here. Call this test two. All right, so we've got our attempt, catch, and finally. And let's kind of change these around a little bit. First thing I want to do is add in an else. So think of this now like a giant if statement. We're saying if, and then if, and then else. So when we get to else, we trust this code and this code should run. I don't like doing this because what happens if something blows up? So then you end up doing another try exempt block in here and I don't like doing them in line over and over. It just gets really messy. So we're going to move that here. I'm gonna call this trusted code. And personally, I don't trust code. I usually do it up here, but you'll see this out there where people are gonna say else just do this. and when it gets here, you trust this implicitly. It can do no wrong. So attempt is now something we have to do some testing. So we're going to assert. 
Now, if you're a parent, you know exactly what an assertion is because you walk up to your child and say, you will clean your room right now. And if they do not comply, if you get a false back, then, well, bad things happen. They get grounded. So we're going to say X is greater than zero. Cert's going to go in and evaluate this condition. If it's true, nothing bad happens. However, if it's false, bad things happen very quickly, meaning it's going to say it it's failed and it's going to raise an assertion error which we'll call exempt and any other catch condition that we put in here so let's just grab the previous tests that we had and let's rename these got to look copy and paste making life simple all right so we're gonna do five divided by zero five cat five two and let's go ahead and test this out move this up all right so we can see now that our assertions are working. So function is test two, something bad happened. So it's immediately saying assert failed and then printing this out. Assert is a powerful tool, but it's not perfect. We wanna know exactly what happened and we wanna be able to handle things on a case by case basis. So typically what I'll do is I'll change this to exception as E or error or whatever you wanna put in here. And then I will actually add in the issue. And then E, of course, has other properties if you wanted to dive into them, but we're just going to leave it as E, and we're just going to print E out here. And let's clear this out and rerun this. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so something bad happened. The issue is that is not supported between instances of string and int. So now we have some sort of typing issue. But notice how division by zero never got caught. So we have a couple choices here. We can leave that in the catch all, or we can do a division by zero error, or we can make a custom error, however we wanted to do it. So if we wanted to catch a specific condition here, we're going to say except assertion error. Then I'm going to say print. F and fail to assert. X and Y. When you look at this now, we have two exceptions that we're handling. We have the assertion error and just the general catch-all. So I'm going to put here specific. And you can chain these out to infinity. I mean, you can basically do every single error. But what I'll do is I'll do things that I would expect. Like if I fail an assertion, I want to know it's just garbage data the user gave us. Or if something higher level happened, I want to be able to catch that. But I want to be able to distinguish in the application the difference between the two. So if we fail an assertion, that's going to get called. If something else happens, this is going to get called. All right, let's try it out. All right, so something bad happened. All right, and then failed to assert. So you can see the two different ones firing off here. Failed to assert, meaning we failed our test. Assert y greater than zero. Let me see if I can get some room here. That failed, which triggered this off. But then you notice how why if this was cat greater than zero how does how does python even begin to evaluate that it can't so it skips over and says bad things happen we cannot compare these two so then it jumps down to the exemption code right here so for our assertion logic it's going to do this one for other things our catch-all is going to get fired off that is actually really really powerful but one thing I want to really caution you on is not to go overboard with this. So for example, if you try to do like a exempt, uh, what am I looking for here? Type error. And then we could just say like wrong type. And let's clear and rerun. 
And you see now it's saying wrong type X and cat can't be compared. But what I'm doing here is my code is getting longer and longer and more and more complex. So I would say look for the specific errors that you absolutely must handle and let everything else fall into a catch all if at a minimum you have just a catch all that's still acceptable. But you want to be able to catch things. I rarely use else because now I am completely trusting all of this code to run without any single issue. And what happens if we do something like that? I just hit space. There's just a blank space right here. Go ahead and clear that out and let's run. Notice how our program, even though we have all the security baked in, has now crashed. And my IDE is not showing me, hey, there's a problem right here. This is why I tend not to use else. Let me go ahead and fix that before we move on and make sure everything's working. As you can see, this can get very complex. I mean, our little function here is now bigger than the screen. I've got to either zoom out, which will make the code small and hard for you to read, or I've got to, well, figure something else out. So we're going to add another complexity here. We're going to make a user defined exception and we're going to raise it meaning we're going to create our own error and then catch it and show why you'd want to do something like that. So this is pretty typical in file IO, but first off, let's go ahead and make a class and let's call this cat error because every cat has some kind of error. Why not? And so cat error is going to inherit a runtime error. So we're going to use the built-in class runtime error, inherit it, and now we have all of that functionality baked in. Let's go ahead and say def, and we're going to init self with and args. And I'm just gonna say self dot args. I always like that word, args. Sounds like a pirate. <laughs> we're gonna say that is the args, so. Very, very simple class. You can feel free to make that as complex as you want, but just know that these error classes are meant to be very short lived. The lifespan of these is basically from the time something happened to the time it's caught. You don't want these things lingering around. Their sole purpose is just to carry information about what happened. All right, so I'm going to say at outline because we're going to use our decorator again. And I'm going to define, let's call this test cats. And we're going to test a quantity of cats. And then I'm going to do a try. Now you start to understand what all this gibberish IntelliSense was popping up in the very beginning. We can do a try exempt. Um, we can do a try exempt else finally, uh, blah, 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 and any other combination. I'm just going to pick try except finally. And it's going to do the code for us. Now, I don't really need all of this stuff. So I'm going to just change this a little bit to suit my needs. IntelliSense is great, but it doesn't always have to be the way they want it to be. So now I just have a try, except, and finally. What we're going to do in here is I'm going to say in our try, if not is instance. Then we're going to test to make sure that QTY is actually an integer because you could, you know, hand it a string and we don't want to take some sort of mathematical operation on a string. Now, if it's not an integer, we want to raise. Now, raise is basically like throwing a ball. We're saying, you know what, this is an error. You go fix it. And we're throwing a rock or a ball at a window saying, here, go catch it. And if you don't catch it, your program's going to break and crash, much like a window would. Maybe I just made a joke about Microsoft Windows. I don't know. Anyways, interpret that as you will. So we're going to raise some type of error. And when I say type of error, I don't mean this, the class type error. I mean, this could be an assertion error or anything that inherits basically a error or runtime error. But for this case, we're going to do a type error because we know that there is a specific issue. And then from here, we're going to say must be an int. So you want to be very careful when you're raising an error that you raise the correct type. And this is one of the few times where Python really, really, really cares about the type. If you try to raise like a string or something, you're going to get some weird results. Although 
I suspect you could probably do it. Um, all right, so now we're going to check for a quantity. So we're going to go back here and say if QTY, and if we got into this point, we know, because this has not been raised, we know that this is an integer and we can work with it mathematically. So now I can say if the quantity is less than nine, then, well, who in their right mind would have less than nine cats? So I'm going to raise our cat error and say must own more than nine cats. Because I don't know what lunatic in their right mind would have less than nine cats. That's why the cat error exists. But now what I'm really demonstrating here is we can make our own custom class as long as it inherits the runtime error. And we can throw it or you know, raise as it's called just like any other except type. Very, very cool. Okay, so now that we've got this, I'm just gonna say print, and we're gonna format that out. I'm just gonna say oops, because this is our catch-all. We're gonna just say like, oops, unknown error, sorry, my bad. And we're gonna say e.args. Now for our finally, I'm just going to say print, Complete. Notice how this is much, 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 much more streamlined than this big bulky thing up here. This is what I'm talking about. Error handling can get very complex very fast. So general rule of thumb, try to keep it short, simple, and to the point. All right, let's go ahead and test out our cats class. I'm gonna say test cats and we want to, there's some crazy person that only has three cats. There's some crazy person that has 12.3 cats. I don't know how you would get a 0.3 cats. That's kind of gruesome. And then we're going to test for 11 cats. And we could, if we wanted to, even just really throw this thing for a curveball here and say ABC. Let's clear out our results and fire it off. All right, so we see must be an int must own more than nine cats must be an int i mean so this is now working as expected so this must be an int must own more than nine cats must be an int and then ta-da finally we have some sane person out there who did follow the directions and i'm just going to for clarity you own x number of cats play this out fire it off one last time you own 11 cats. You can see that you own 11 or you own whatever is not in there because we threw and caught the exceptions. So whenever you see try, think of this like playing baseball or some sport. They have the ball, and if something happens they don't like, they're going to throw the ball, and it's up to something else to catch it. And regardless of what happens, the sportscaster is going to, well, call it like he sees it and says, and we're done, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.